one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world put out an article and talked about every beneficial aspect of intermittent fasting that has been studied. What the article doesn't address and no one really talks about is what this does for your mouth and your oral health. I'm Dr. Richard Buck and I've been a dentist for 14 years. In this video, I want to address the dental effects, whether good or bad, of intermittent fasting. Quickly, if you don't already know, intermittent fasting means you only eat during a certain period within a day or days, and fast or don't eat the rest of the time. On December 26, 2019, the Journal of New England Medicine, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world, put out an article and talked about every beneficial aspect of intermittent fasting that has been studied. This article claims intermittent fasting lowers obesity, cardiovascular indicators, lowers risk of tumors, increases treatment outcome for cancer, delays neurologic diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I mean, you name it, atherosclerosis, multiple sclerosis, inflammation, healing, it improves almost every health problem. Almost as if intermittent fasting is what our body expects and how it runs optimally. What the article doesn't address and no one really talks about is what this does for your mouth and your oral health. I just quickly wanna go over what I found out about what happens to my oral health, especially my dental plaque with intermittent fasting and how it does or doesn't fit into what we already know about dental hygiene. What I'm putting up right now is footage from about a year ago when I made a video comparing toothbrushes finding the best toothbrush. You should watch that video later, but these are the before shots of where I stain my plaque every morning before I brush my teeth. To get my plaque to really build up during that time, I would only brush once a day, which helped me better demonstrate for these videos which brushes work best to remove plaque. Since I made that video, I have started intermittent fasting, meaning I only eat two meals a day and I never snack. Also, once a week, I go a full day of fasting without food. Whereas a year ago, I would snack once or twice a day and eat two to three meals a day as well. I would fast a full day, but only about once every other month for my religion. What I want to show you is the difference in results of plaque buildup before and after intermittent fasting and also also after the days I fully fasted. Also forgive the quality of the footage from a year ago. I've upped my equipment from the filming technique since then. First, let me analyze this footage after I stained my plaque from multiple days without intermittent fasting and this is because it's over a year ago. You can see, I get a lot of plaque buildup in that upper left lateral incisor too. There is quite a bit of buildup there. On my lower anterior teeth, there is a ton of plaque buildup, mostly all the way up to those incisor edges. And once again, this is all pre-intermittent fasting. Now let's look at some of my plaque buildup since, now that I've been doing intermittent fasting for almost a year. This footage is not after a full day fast, but it is after a day of intermittent fast. I ate two meals a day, once again, no snacking, and also I should note that also I do a very low sugar intake as well, and I'll do another video on the importance of that as well later. You can see from this footage before I brush from a year ago to today, it isn't near as much plaque buildup as it was before. Not even near as much on the upper left lateral incisor, and a lot less on the lower incisors as well. Okay, so this could all be chance, but then, now let's look at the footage from my plaque after after 38 hours of fasting, that's a full day fast plus 14 more hours. Black is still even less than it was before. Overall, the plaque is not as dense and more sparse once I've done that full day fast. Specifically, look at the lower right lateral incisor. It is much more sparse after fasting. Plaque has a hard time growing and proliferating because it uses the food you eat to grow as well, and especially sugar. So let me put up one shot from the pre-intermittent fasting, one during intermittent fasting, and one after a full fast. If you want more examples, you can watch a lot of my videos that I'm making right now where I'm comparing toothbrushes and you can just see the plaque is not near as much as it used to be. It still fluctuates from day to day, so some days I'll have more buildup than others. But generally speaking, the more you fast, the less plaque grows. But now let's talk about what all dentists already know about cavities and why we should already be embracing intermittent fasting. In dental school, 
All of us dentists learn about what causes and what are the main causes of cavities and tooth decay. Now we all know sugar and we've known that for a long, long time, but something also that we've known for decades and is probably one of the biggest indicators is intermittent fasting is and should be the norm. And this is something called the Stefan curve. What this tells us is the acidity level or pH in our mouth. When we eat food and especially sugar, the pH level in our mouth drops because the bacteria also live in our mouth, eat that same food. Only the byproduct they make is acidic. It is that direct acidity from the plaque sitting on our teeth below a pH level of about 5.5 that causes tooth decay. However, eventually our continued saliva flow is what buffers the acid to make our mouth more neutral again to avoid the decay process. This graph is the Stefan curve and that explains this phenomenon. So how acidic our mouth becomes and how long it stays under the pH level of 5.5 depends on what we we eat, how much of certain bacteria we have, and how much saliva we produce, and a few other things as well. But then there is some stuff that we're able to control. The issue is the more times you eat, the more bacteria are able to keep the mouth acidic and maintain the mouth in that acidic nature. So once again, the longer you are under that 5.5 pH acidity level, the more likely you are to develop cavities and gum disease. So if you're constantly eating and having meals and snacks throughout the day, your pH drops and your saliva is never actually able to buffer that up substantially and the more time it stays down there the more likely you are to develop cavities and that is why with oral health intermittent fasting is the way that things should be you eat you don't snack and the saliva buffers that back up and you never really get cavities because of that and you get less plaque growth and so now apply all of what we know if we are fasting we have less plaque as we saw earlier, and since we are eating less, we also have less acidic time under that threshold of 5.5. So we have less plaque with less time to be destructive. You can now manage your oral health as well as your overall health much better if you're doing intermittent fasting. The amazing thing about all of this is that it is within our control with intermittent fasting, which basically means you only eat within a time frame of the day. I made a whole video about intermittent fasting where I get my blood drawn every day during a three day fast. If you want to learn the benefits of fasting and how it actually makes you less hungry and what it does to your hormones to make you more healthy as a whole, watch that video. I will link to that video at the end of this video. How and when you fast should be a choice you make for yourself and you don't have to worry because you will get used to not eating at certain times if you stick to it. Once again, watch that video, it goes over all of it. For example, I used to weigh 240 pounds and now I weigh about 185 pounds. And since I've cut most sugar out of my diet and started intermittent fasting, I've suppressed my hunger and I'm no longer even feel hungry except twice a day right before I normally eat. You will be amazed if you start intermittent fasting and you cut out sugar. Also, watch my videos on the best toothbrush techniques if you haven't already. And there's a link below this video for $30 off my favorite toothbrush. By far, it is my favorite. So get that toothbrush and watch the video on how to use it and you'll see it just eliminates most plaque in your mouth and you will have great oral health. So subscribe if you want a healthy mouth and more importantly, a healthy body and watch one of those other videos now.